Hey, welcome back. So in this video, we're going to be talking about functions. And functions are really important in any programming language, and C is no exception. So functions provide, a, well, uh, they provide a few different things. One of them is abstraction. So if you think in terms of abstraction, think of, uh, say, for example, that you send your uh, wife, girlfriend, whatever, out to the store to get some bread. So you just say, hey, honey, go out and get some bread. So you, you can go to the store and get some bread. You wouldn't necessarily provide every instruction uh, as far as, okay, take this turn, take that turn, turn on the car. I mean, whatever the instructions happen to be, you wouldn't say all of that. She would know how to drive a car. She would know how to get to the store, what store to go to, what type of bread. You wouldn't do that. You wouldn't tell her all the details of what it takes to get the bread. So that's, that's abstraction. And that's what you get with functions. So in C, you have functions, and we talked about this, and the main itself is a function. It's a good example of a function. The printf is a function call. So there's somewhere, there's a function called printf, and it knows how to write to the screen. How it does it, how it does the magic, I've never looked into it, but you can rest assured this is a function, and it's probably in the library std.io. So, Let's do a let's write a function real quick, and let's just write a some function that says hi. So and this function says hi, and we get rid of the hello world, and we just say. And it says hi. And you can see over here that it says hi. So if we were to call the function again multiple times and we run it, it says hi, hi, hi. Right? So we have that function. So functions can do more than just do something so simple like say hi, they can actually carry some very complex logic. Like we said, okay, when you say go to the store, maybe that's a function itself. Maybe it's composed of other functions. So if, let's say, for example, we have a function called, uh, let's say we have a function that gets the cube of an integer. So we have cube. And simply we can call the function so here we can have the actual cube cube of 2 cube of 2 Right, or Q result, or whatever we want to call it, we just say Q. Right, or we can call it directly right from here, and we can say Q2. And we're calling a function here, and you might get confused about that because we're calling a function within a function call. So we're nesting function calls. So what happens is it goes from innermost to outermost. So this function call gets executed first, the result value is then used as a parameter to the function that's calling it. And you can nest as many. Typically, you don't do too many. But yeah, you can call functions, calls within function calls. So you can nest them like this one is. So in this case, the cube of 2 is 8. And we could reuse our function call, our function. So we could do, do the same thing for example, for 3. And then let's pick something else easy, like 10. So we have 3 and then we have 10. 
And now we have the cube 2 of 8, 3 is 27, because 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27, 10 times 10 is 100, times 10 is 1,000. So there you go, you have a function. Now one important thing about the function is the return value, this, and it has to return whatever you tell it. Like in this case, the say hi function doesn't return anything, and that's specified by the key by the keyword void. So it doesn't return anything, and you notice that it doesn't return anything. Functions have to return something, and they have to have all paths of the function return something. So let's take another function that does something, and let's make it a little more interesting. So let's say, for example, we have another function, and we call this the math function, or we call it the do math, you know, right? So in this case, we're going to have a couple of uh, parameters. We're going to have the int x, int y, and then we have a care for op, right? And we're going to do something very simple with this one. In this case, we're going to have it return uh, math operations. So for example, our op, one way to document your function, by the way, is to do something like this and say, for example, uh, name, you know, you could say function, do math, uh, param x first value param y second I, th I guess you would say operand I think you could say operand right I think that's a prop thing I won't look it up right now and then the param op is the operator or operation, which will be add addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. And so how do we do that? Well, you already know about if statements. So there's a, some very simple logic. So you could say, for example, if op uh, equals So then you could say, let's, let's store the result in something, right? So we say our return type has to be of the same type as we specified here in the signature. We specified uh, the return in, so we have to return in. So we are going to store that in a, in, a, in, a, in a variable. So by default, we, we're going to return negative 1, and we'll return the result. Now, we'll modify the result when we perform the operation. So if op equals plus, we'll say result equals x plus y. Very simple. And then we could say else if op equals subtraction, then the result can be x minus y. And let, let me scroll down so we can have a better view of this. And then we can say else if op equals multiplication, the result equals x times y. And then finally, there's no, nothing else. So by default, we could we can do it like this. We can say else if op equals division and then we can say result equals x divided by y and it's integer division and then if if all if none of these execute none of these execute so if this is true then it won't evaluate these down here and so it'll just keep Stepping down through the if statements until it finds ones that are true. If none of them are true, it's going to return whatever the result was originally set. Now, you notice I could have done, I could have returned directly from here. I could have just say return x plus y. But I chose not to do that because there's some basic uh, 
guideline for structured programming to say they should be one way in and one way out of a function. That was really intended for go the go-to statements and we I won't even discuss go-to statements in, in the series, but just know be aware that other languages prior had it and C kind of just carried on with it. But go-to's are scary because they can actually jump from in here to some other function. They can jump all over the place. I mean they can just jump and you can really create some some really nasty bugs by doing that. Uh, returning from here or anything like that, it's not as bad, but there is possibility that the logic doesn't get executed as intended. So I just went ahead and put the result there, return that. So let's go ahead and do some math. So let's take and do some math operations. So we're going to say, For example, we're going to say math, it, math, let's take something simple, let's say for example 20 and 5 and the operator is, uh, let's say addition and now we're going to say math, do math, what do we call it, do math and we'll do 20, 5, and we'll pass it the operator uh, for addition. And we run it. And you notice the math 25. It's kind of backwards when you look at it and it's 25. If maybe I should put the other parameter in the middle. It would make more sense. You know, maybe if I did the op here. And it doesn't really matter because they're by name. So I could actually put that there and that there and that changes everything so now I got to make sure that I change my operation to say to read like this and so that like looks a little more logical there and so 25 plus 25 and so it, my result is 25 now I can do that with the other ones And so let's take that and change this. Let's just change, actually. Uh, let's change it to that. And actually, I should have this to demonstrate it, but I might not be able to get away with it. Oh, wait a minute. What am I doing? I always forget subtraction for some reason. So now I change the operator minus and multiply and divide. And so when I run this, I should get the right answer. Right? Oh, but I have them backwards. I need to change these also because five. Oh, what did I do? No, I'm still doing it wrong. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so So let's see if it works. And we'll run it. And see 20 plus 5, 25, 20 minus 5, 15, 20 times 5, 120 divided by 5 is 4. So it seems that our function worked out just fine. And so as you can see, the, op, uh, the parameters, these are called parameters in your function definition. And they have to be included. Now, I couldn't just call math with anything. If I leave out a parameter, it's not going to like it. If I, if I could call it, I have to match the parameters and I have to match the parameter types. So for example, uh, if I was to call it even with the three parameters and they're different types. No, remember, this is supposed to be now a character and this an in, and I don't think this will work, but it, it never know it might. It did because there's 
some implicit conversions that go on. Care is really just a byte. It's, it's still a number, so it can be converted easily over. So that conversion can take place just fine. The the where you might run into a problem is when, for example, you try to do like a float into an integer. I think this would be a problem. I think it'll give me no. It seems to take it. Let me see. Let me try that now. Uh, it doesn't seem to complain. I guess it's truncating it and implicitly converting it over. It's dangerous, but you know. So in some cases these things work, they don't, in other cases they don't work. But, you know, you also have different data types, and I didn't talk about those, but you can actually have longs and doubles and all that sort of thing. And things can get truncated or just get, become really ugly when you pass them. So, there you have it. Do math. Now, one thing about functions is that these values are just passed by value. Think of it like if somebody asks you, um, for some information, you take a sheet of paper, a sticky note, and you put it on that sheet of paper and you send it to them, you hand it over to them, but you don't change your original information. If they change that sticky note and change some numbers around, some data, that the sticky note will change and they'll have the wrong information, yes. So if I was to change X here, it would change but it won't affect it coming out because I'm not passing by reference. I'm only passing my value. Now, you can have any kind, any type here. You can have float. For example, we could change all these to float. So float. And this would not be affected. The result is still integer. So these, and you can do operations on float. So it would be fine. And since that will actually work, See, so it'll take it. But now if I was to say, for example, I think if I, well, let's go back. Let's go back here and let's go back to N. Actually, I think if I actually declare one, if I say int, let's say opt operand 2 equals 5. Let's see what it does. Oh, why not? Let's not do that. Let me put a float 5.333 or something. And what happens if I replace one of these with operand 2? And let's run it. That seems to be fine. Doesn't complain. So, now keep in mind when I was talking about having a result. I couldn't get rid of this here. I couldn't say, for example, get rid of this here and then just return out of one of these. You got to make sure that you have a return statement for all your cases in a function. If it's supposed to return something, you return that. I couldn't just put it here and not put it on the other one. I should get a compiler error. This doesn't make sense. It shouldn't allow me to do this. I think it might be a standard in C that it implicitly returns something. This doesn't even make sense because it doesn't return anything. It's telling me that it's not compiling. This does not make sense. It should not be returning anything because how can it? Result is here. How can it return that? So I think there may be a problem with REPL IT. It shouldn't do that. You should get an error and it should not return anything. By the way, I use this comment to comment. Oh, you know what? Maybe these lines are not. Because those comments are not. See, let's run it. Doesn't make any sense. It shouldn't work. Well, I have to investigate that on the actual compiler on my own computer, you know, instead of doing it on the cloud. It shouldn't do that. So there you have it. You have functions. They will come in handy. You can do different things with them. 
The other thing that I, you can do is, one thing that I didn't mention is, is you can nest uh, functions, calls inside other functions. And I mean, you already did that in main because you're calling main. But just to give you an example, you can say, for example, in, in here, you can say cube x every time. And then in cube x, turn around and say hi. I mean, this doesn't make any sense. I'm just making an example. And so now you have, you know, where, oh, yeah, see, it's saying hi every time. So it's calling, making function calls. So you can nest them. And basically, that's how you build your components. Think of it like when you have an engine. You have an engine. Okay, that's the big component. This is this is not even the engine itself because this is the main. This is the the whole car, you know. And maybe some of these are make up the engine and all the different components. And you kind of break down the problem into small little problems. And functions allow you to do that, to take the big problem, break it down into little problems. And when we get more advanced in the tutorial, we can talk about how you can write code that makes sense and how you can separate it and, you know, uh, have it do what it's supposed to do. One of the things about functions is that you want to keep them small. You don't want to go too big on them. If they're too big, then maybe you need to take some of those details and break them down even further. Uh, the other thing is that if you have a function that returns a value, you want to keep it uh, pure. You don't want to have it uh, creating side effects like I did, for example, in this case. Like you don't want to say Q and send be sending output to the screen. So you don't want to do Q and it returns it, but then you're outputting stuff. You know, you don't want to do that either. Either you do something, either you execute a command or you could uh, execute a query. This being a query because you actually pass something in and it returns something. And this one is a command you tell it do something and it executes that and it does that so you don't want to necessarily start mixing them up and a lot of programs make that mistake early in their careers and I'm talking about you know people that have graduated from college and all that and then they come to the workplace and they're still writing code like that a lot of times and even a year or two into their career they may write code like that but best practice said no you shouldn't do that try to avoid that either return something or not if it does return something, maybe it just returns to to tell you that it executed. For example, if I have to say hi, I might return, you know, one or zero to say that it did work. Or if it's an exception, I return some kind of other value. But you shouldn't really try to do something and then have a bunch of code and be mixing it up because it won't be portable because you want to be able to separate this. Okay, you want to be able to separate your code and you want to make it. So someone else can use this code. Maybe they don't want to print hi to the screen every time you do Q. Maybe they want to avoid that. And now they're stuck with it, so it's less maintainable. Something to keep in mind. There you have it. Hopefully it wasn't too long and I didn't bore you. And uh, thanks for watching. And if you really like this video, uh, go ahead and click the subscribe button.